small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is an important piece that is just hitting the forefront of medicine right now. And it's important to understand that not all small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO as we'll call it, is really a uh, symptomatic problem. So at, at some point we read about online, I'm gonna boil down a lot of things you might read online, and we read about SIBO and we say, oh, I don't have those symptoms, so I'm okay. But in the reality, you know, 50% of people with thyroid problems have SIBO. And when we treat SIBO, we see an improvement in their actual thyroid levels. And they don't need as much thyroid. I've seen people go off of thyroid medication. So, uh, and, and some of these people didn't have any symptoms of SIBO. But classic symptoms would be bloating after you eat. We're talking about within 30 minutes after you eat. And not something that's like two hours later, because by then it's getting to the large intestine. So um, SIBO is, uh, is involved in a lot of underlying pathology. If you have rosacea around the nose area, some uh, reddening there, most of those cases have SIBO positive testing. And I find that it's really quite common. So I screen a lot of people for SIBO because when we treat that, we start seeing a lot of results. And we gotta get the gut in order if we want to really expand on what we're trying to do with our health goals. So how do you get SIBO is another question. There are a lot of causes for SIBO. It's really not something we pinpoint usually because we don't know how long somebody's had SIBO, but if you've been on antibiotics, if you've been exposed to a lot of uh, food that's been sprayed you know, for bugs, if you've been uh, in different kinds of surgeries, especially abdominal surgeries, if you've had the stomach flu or gastroenteritis, uh, that can cause some paralysis of the nerve system around the gut that can lead to SIBO problems. So if you're going to be testing for SIBO, it's, it's, there's a couple ways you can do it. Way number one, the most common way, is with a breath test. Way number two is there's some new immunoglobin uh, measurement that can be done with a lab called Cyrex Laboratories. And that's just a blood draw. It's a little more expensive and it's kind of new science, so we'll, we'll see how that pans out. But right now, most people do a breath test, and a lacculose breath test is the most well-proven one right now. So this is an example of a, a lacculose breath test result, and that's a great way to kind of demonstrate what this is. When you do this breath test, you do a baseline first to see where you're at, then you drink the lacculose solution. And when you drink that lacculose solution, it's a sugar that goes into the small intestine and then your large intestine probably around the two hour point. So if you see on this graph here, the small intestine is along the bottom, then a transition to the large intestine. We should see normally mostly a flat line along the bottom here because in the small intestine we shouldn't have a lot of bacteria at all. It should be pretty clean. Then when we get to the large intestine, then we want to see a big arch because that's a biodiverse uh, microbiome. And uh, this test is an example of a positive SIBO test. So this person uh, did a baseline, drank the lactulose, and the first part of the small intestine is fine. It's all clear. But about halfway or so uh, into the small intestine, it begins to spike upward, and that's where we know we have a problem. One of the causes, potential causes, for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is from an ileocecal valve. That's the valve that keeps the large intestine contents out of the small intestine. If that valve has some positional issues or closing issues, which can be tested by a visceral therapist, uh, then we get this reflux of bacteria in the small intestine and that can be part of why someone gets SIBO. So, uh, this person has a positive SIBO, both the hydrogen type and the methane type because when she drank this lactulose solution, she had some uh, bacteria that produce methane and some bacteria that produce hydrogen when they consume the sugar. And those gases go across the membranes into the bloodstream and we blow it off through our lungs and that's why the breath test is, is useful in detecting. So we shouldn't see any, any of the, these gases blowing off until we get to the large intestine, but on her, we did. There was a spike. This lady we actually treated, she was a, a younger woman who had rheumatoid arthritis and was on steroids and was about to get on some other bigger drugs, but uh, once we treated the SIBO, she didn't have to get on the bigger drugs, 
the steroids came off and she has pretty decent control of her rheumatoid arthritis at this point. It's pretty amazing. So um, let me show you an example of a good SIBO test. So this one is what we, ex we hope to see, you know, either before <laughs> treatment and they don't need treatment ideally, uh, or if we are treating, we should be doing a post test. We want to prove, did we get the job done? Because sometimes, uh, it, you know, we get the job done partway and we need to continue on with treatment. Uh, a typical botanical treatment, you know, like supplements and things can take a couple of months. And I think it's a little easier and safer. Uh, the uh, antibiotic treatment can be done as well. Comes with some different risks that are pretty rare, but that's just two weeks of treatment if your insurance can cover that uh, medication. That can be a, a nice route as well. And so after you do that treatment, you want to check your SIBO test and it should look something like this, where we have this flat line all the way across. And then when we get to large intestine, there's a nice big spike because we want to have a lot of bacteria in the large intestine. It, they serve a purpose, do a job. Now let me show you one other one, just to demonstrate about the large intestine. This person, she had a negative SIBO test. This is after treatment. And, but we get to the large intestine and it's the same. It's just kind of flatlined, and we had some work to do. This person, we then did a stool study to find out what was going on in the large intestine. Let's start to work on that area. Summary of it all, and you'll learn more as we go, but SIBO is a fascinating new field of, of, uh, of science that we're really diving into and finding that it's a root cause for a lot of people's uh, health problems that they're struggling with. I watch when we treat SIBO, brain fog start to lift for people. They get more energy, they can manage their weight better. Uh, the, the possibilities seem endless and we have to just try and see how it's gonna affect each individual. So a uh, very important test. Uh, the treatment ranges in effectiveness from 40 to 87%. It doesn't really matter the, the, if you use the antibiotics versus a supplement regimen. They're pretty close to the same. Uh, if we're really addressing the potential causes like low stomach acid perhaps, or in, in the case of uh, this one back here, where we're addressing the potential for an ileocecal valve defect, uh, then we're going to have a lot better chance of that 87% success rate. But that's still not perfect, so that's why we've got to check and make sure if we need to extend treatment, repeat treatment, uh, and we want to get the job all the way done so it won't come back because we would like to have permanent results. So uh, that's all for now. Thank you for uh, taking a look at this and I hope that helps you on your journey.